Good morning and welcome. Can you believe it's already the fifth week of Lent? We're into our last week of traveling with Jesus as he is on his journey for that fateful final time in Jerusalem. And we know that Palm Sunday is coming and he will be welcomed. We will be there too this coming week. But for now, we're stopping with him as he stops at the home of his old friends Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And as we were centering our thoughts yesterday in church, we always begin our service with a verse, a message that will help us focus. And our centering verse yesterday, this fifth Sunday of Lent, came from Isaiah 54. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. And we watch how this incredible gift that we have been given plays out as it comes to its ultimate climax with the death and resurrection of Jesus. But for now, we are watching that love and compassion being given a thank you by Mary in this house. And we read that it's now six days before Passover and Jesus comes to this home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And you can imagine, now that Jesus is back in this house, people might be crowding around. He's back because they knew he had raised Lazarus from the dead. They knew he had performed this miracle. And here is Lazarus reclining at the table with Jesus, Mary, and Martha. Do we ever stop to think about the miraculous things that God has done in spite of the things we human beings do to the earth and to each other, and to come to a time where how do we thank God for what God has done? And are we in awe of the miracles that God has done and will do in our lives if we are willing to follow? Mary was so overcome, we are told, that she took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet. Now this, as they were reclining, they didn't sit in chairs at a table the way we do. They were reclining near the floor, and she came and used this very expensive perfume to anoint him, and then to scandalously wipe his feet with her hair. This would have shocked all the people around the table. The expense of the perfume, her actions, but she so wanted to do something so outrageous to show her thanks and her gratitude and her love for what her Savior had already done for her. And of course, she had her detractors. Judas, who was present, was saying, why didn't you sell that perfume? Give that money to the poor. A valid question, except for Judas's motive which was he wanted to pocket some of that profit himself, for we know he is about to betray Jesus. But Mary was unashamed to stand up to criticism. She was unashamed to do something unheard of in order to show her love for her Savior. How do we show our gratitude, our thanks? Are we fully aware of the miracles that can await us as we walk away from the empty tomb with Jesus on Sunday morning. Our lay leader, Robert Gensler, will pick up these thoughts and continue in our next session. But for now, think about how, if you had the chance to be at Jesus' feet, what would you say? What would you do? Until then, God bless.